Hi, my loves. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. Don't worry, we are going to recap Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 13. Oh yeah, finale. Let's, let's celebrate. I mean, it's been a long season. I'm gonna drop some tea. I'm going to take you through the recap. But I just wanted to share something because you know I tell you guys almost everything. Everything is in the Patreon, but almost everything is out here. And remember I said to you guys, if I could find a doctor that would prescribe me a Ozempic-like treatment that wasn't going to put people with diabetes at risk, I was going to do it because I am getting fat. And it's because of my age, because I work out, out on my running machine. I hike three miles every weekend, uphill running, and I eat decent. I'm not like an A eater, but I'm a B eater. I still am so overweight. I'm like 15 pounds overweight. I feel like a freaking like wonton. This is what I look like in a bikini right now. So I am going to try it for eight weeks. So let me know if you want me to tell you what it's like. I'm not promoting it or anything. So it's just like me doing it. So let me know in the comments if you want me to share it. Otherwise, I will not mention it again. And hopefully you'll just see me go. Ah, what did you guys think of Real Housewives of New Jersey season 13 finale? Very difficult for me to watch, me personally. So... I mean, let's talk about the most explosive moment. It actually, to me, wasn't the fighting. It was when Louis Ruelas admitted that he hired a private investigator to investigate all the cast on the show and bring all their dirty laundry and kind of mentioned it almost like a mafiosa guy. Just saying was a little weird. Not weird if you've heard the David Brill interview, but weird if you haven't. And weird, you know, I try to take a viewpoint of where you guys would be coming from. So you probably thought it was pretty weird. It turns out that he has kind of an MO based on the interview I did with David that, you know, at one point he was, I guess, aff affiliated with Mobster Pete. I heard gossip about the reunion, but only about the men in the reunion. There'll be an altercation between Frank Catania Sr. and Louis Ruelas, and there's going to be an altercation between um, Dolores and Frank Catania, and that's gonna be like wild stuff. And it's gonna be about Louis Ruelas, and everybody at the reunion is coming for Louis Ruelas. So there's going to be a bunch of people focused on him at the reunion, so get ready, that's coming. And they will talk about the fact that he hired private investigators at the reunion. And like, he's gonna have to address that, yeah. And you know there's been a lot of gossip about Louis Ruelas paying people to drag Melissa and Margaret. So expect them to be coming to against Louis Ruelas for trying to sabotage them with the fan base on purpose and expect Louis to be saying that he thinks that Margaret and Melissa are bribing influencers. There's going to be a whole thing about that. So get ready, it's coming. And expect Teresa Judice to flip out over Louis. Yeah. He triggers so many people in different ways. For her, it's love. Oh, there's going to be a whole conversation about ghosting and whether or not Louis Ruelas ghosts people when he doesn't want to face the music on something he hasn't followed through with. Expect that discussion as well. Oh, and Frank Catania Jr.'s new job is going to come up. What else is I there? I don't think it's going to focus very much on the whole cheating story. Believe it or not, it's really going to be more about Louis Ruelas. It's so weird, I know, but it just turned out that way because so many people are angry with him right now for different reasons, all behind the scenes stuff. So it's going to be weird seeing how they take this out and play it on the show. Shh, don't tell anyone. I'm trusting you all. Well, we were all waiting for this big fight. Um, and there was a big fight between Joe and Louie, but it wasn't a physical altercation, which was the gossip for months. So whoever put that out there completely lied and misled everyone. And I, it was cast members. So that's really weird. 
that they did. Hmm. I found out that there's a group of cast members that behind Margaret's back, actually in conversations, call her the devil. Yeah, the devil. This is her nickname, the devil. They say that. Yeah. Margaret's had a tough season. She's had her good friend from childhood turn on her and tell this awful secret. The fans, as of tonight's episode, will probably turn on her for a while because she started this whole thing by spilling her arsenal to her friend who turned on her. If you're wondering why Margaret and uh, Melissa are still friends and Melissa didn't yell at uh, Margaret, that's because they had coordinated that they needed to keep um, together on this one so that no one believed the cheating rumor was true. Margaret believed that if Melissa actually got angry with her and followed through with that on the show, that it would actually give validity to the rumor. So early on, Melissa and Margaret agreed a pact. Margaret explained that it wasn't her intention to ever have it come out and she felt so bad about it, but the way to like mitigate it would be for them to be a united front. So David Yontif got sent some gossip about Margaret Joseph's handbags uh, causing or being given a warning message about causing cancer. I, if you inhale them, touch them, or eat them, I mean, why would you eat a handbag? But it does say that on the, um, the warning or the notification. The notification was a strictly California one. Margaret clapped back and she said this, and I just wanted to share it. Learn to read documents and understand Prop 65 in California. Even alcoholic beverages and iPhones have the warning. I shouldn't expect someone who trolls Twitter all day to know anything about business. And then she sort of trolled, I don't know, someone who reposted uh, David's gossip because it was actually David who posted it. So... Anyway, um, I'm not going to read the rest of it because I would never drag someone, you know, an influencer either. Margaret, I think, should have directed that canon at the instigator, not the people who duplicate the gossip. It happens. But that said, I'd say Margaret was in a shitty mood because she knew how bad tonight's episode was. The finale uh, starts off with all the women wearing prohibition-themed attire to an Irish party. For some reason, all the men look like 1920s paper boys or taxi drivers from Boston or New York. I don't know why. Let me show you. I mean, look at the little outfits. Look at them. The little vests and the caps. And then there's the vests and the caps. I mean, did Irish people really dress like this during Prohibition? I don't think so. I mean, this is very uh, unoriginal. Let me see. Wow, Hold I on. guess they did wear those caps. Like, at least the one guy pouring out the booze. This is Ireland in the Prohibition. Although I like the, the hat with the stripe on it. That's a little more hipster. <laughs> so there you have it. So anyway, we get into the party, okay? And everybody looks pretty cool. Let me show you uh, Melissa's look and Dolores's look. Here's Melissa in a sort of modern take of the theme. I really enjoyed the bohemian scarf. And here's Dolores. She did like a Betty style, more 1950s vibe, but I really liked her look as well. R Rachel, who you can see off to the corner, had a beautiful dress too, very Marilyn Monroe. Poor Polly went all out on this party. It had Irish dancing in the front by children. By the way, Irish dancing is a huge sport. My sort of daughter, because it was the father of my child's daughter, who I pretty much raised in her later teens. Um, I love her so much. She loved to do Irish dancing. And I used to enjoy going to see it, but I really respected the talent of Irish dancers. She was really good at it. She even competed, I think, on the state level. It's amazing. Have you ever seen it? Let me play it quick. are 
are drinking and the men are drinking and they're getting really drunk, but tensions are high. Everybody knows that this is probably the season finale event. And behind the scenes, I can tell you everybody is very stressed out as to what is going to be the drama. Because everyone knows a bomb is going to be dropped. So Jennifer um, Aiden is there and Danielle comes up to Jennifer Aiden and says, listen, I'm going to tell Melissa Gorga tonight about the cheating rumors that Margaret told Laura Lee Jensen uh, because I want to come out with it. And Jennifer doesn't really want her to, uh, or that's how she pretends to play it. And so she's like, I don't know, this probably isn't a great time. And Danielle's like, no, I'm going to do it. And really the reason she does it is because Melissa oddly keeps saying to her, do you have anything you want to say? Is there anything that, you know, you seemed really upset in Ireland. You didn't come out with whatever was bothering you. Was that really all to do with your brother? And she was like, you didn't have something else you wanted to say? Is there anything else you want to say? And I couldn't tell if Melissa was doing this because she knew that Danielle was going to be the one who said it and she was waiting for it. Or if she, you know, when she was like, let's get this over with. Or if she was doing that because she thought Danielle might spill some more t family tea. I think it was the first thing I said, not the latter. So Louis Ruelas and Teresa arrive to the party late, either because the producers tell them to or because they were apprehensive about the party. They knew something bad was going to happen. Maybe they wanted to avoid it, hoping it would come out before they got there, maybe, and they be over with. But sure enough, it isn't. And what happens is Teresa and Louis get there. Louis doesn't say hi to Joe Gorga. He's right in front of him. He ignores him. He kisses all the other guys and says hi and really slights him. Joe Gorga verbalizes that he thinks this is really rude. And right off the bat, there is just bad energy between Teresa, Louis, Joe, and Melissa. Danielle makes her move. She takes Melissa Gorga aside and says, let's sit down. I've got to talk to you. She says, I feel like as a friend, I've got to tell you what I've heard. And Melissa's like, all right. And Danielle says, I heard that you kissed some guy and cheated on Joe Gorga in a car or whatever. And it came from Margaret's friend, Laura. And I just wanted to let you know that the rumors going around and I, don't shoot the messenger, but I had to tell you. And then Melissa, of course, gets extremely upset. And then we see some flashback scenes basically making us understand that Melissa Gorga and Joe Gorga knew that this was going to come out on this season. They knew six months ago, uh, you know, from the point that they're shooting the show, not it airing, and that they had already resolved it within their own relationship. And they say they knew about it and that it wasn't true and that Joe doesn't believe anything that, you know, is being said about Melissa cheating. Now, what we also find out, which I didn't know, is that Gia called Joe and said, we don't think Melissa's good enough for you. Basically, I'm paraphrasing, you could do better, I think is exactly what she said. And also, supposedly... Louis Ruelas met with Joe alone to give him a heads up that this was coming on the show so he wouldn't be blindsided and said that Melissa's been cheating with many men and that he should know this. And Joe just listened and then like just didn't believe it and said, forget it and just saw it as an attack on his marriage and them trying to create a storyline that would damage him and his family. So then now we're back at the party and this has all been established and Melissa starts to just flip out like, okay, you guys want to do this? You want to go here? Come on. And she just kind of starts, you're all losers. And she does the L. I mean, the L. L being Italian, that was kind of lame. I was thinking she should have done the, or like, fungu. <laughs> Everyone swore in Italian. Like, I'm like, are these people really Italian? 
I mean, no one said, but Fungul, Fungul. <laughs> my God, in my family, <laughs> that would have been ripping already. So this sort of sets Louis Ruelas off. It triggers him that Melissa's calling Teresa a loser and him a loser. And he's like, we're winners. And he does the face, you know, the really scary face. And then he kind of gets a switch flipped and sort of acts like a little bit of a nut, like total nut job. And then um, Joe, I think, starts to worry from his behavior because it's so odd. And it isn't directed at Joe. It's directed at Melissa. So it's like Louie is sort of going for Melissa. And I think Joe is used to on the show that when there's a fight with the women, the men fight together. A man doesn't go for the woman. He goes for that woman's man. And that's okay, but not to do it to the woman. And so it really triggered Joe when he saw Louie, you know, going for Melissa, making her feel uncomfortable. So Joe's like steps up and he just goes off and he goes zero to six. He starts screaming. And then um, Louis kind of like, let's see what, you know, kind of like egging it on. And then he's sort of back pedaling. And you hear Danielle's husband say to him, you know, go find Teresa, go find Teresa, meaning don't you do it. Don't like, don't you start yelling at Melissa or fighting Joe because you're going to look like shit. And that's what I believe. I believe Danielle's husband was trying to protect Louis from the cameras because he knows he's a little boop -a -doop. So he sends him downstairs because he knows Teresa can wrangle him. So Louis goes downstairs and looks for Teresa and finds Teresa. Okay, and she like calms it down and then she wants to go and she's like, this is, I knew I was going to get blamed for this. I didn't even get involved with this gossip. I didn't even do anything to do with this gossip on the damn show and I'm getting blamed for it. She's like, you know, other than going to that first lunch and then, um, but everyone's like thinking that, you know, Melissa's going to think that Teresa put Jennifer Aiden up to it and Jennifer Aiden put Danielle up to it and then, you know, Louie stepped in and he's involved, even though Teresa isn't involved. It's like her mouthpiece. And so, yeah, this is what everyone thinks, right? So then Margaret is coming for Danielle hard. She's unhinged. Danielle's unhinged. She's slapping her ass. She's putting her ass on camera. She's saying, how dare you act like you run this show, like you're the producer of the show, basically. And, you know, why doesn't anyone come for you? Why is everyone so afraid of you? I'm not afraid of you. Let's go. Let's do this, bitch. Okay. So anyway, and then Margaret and Jen start fighting. And Margaret says like a really low blow, like, whoa. She says to Jennifer, you know, it's not like my fault that your husband like banged a subordinate or something like that. I'm probably saying it worse, but you get the drift. And Jennifer, like, <gasps> she looks at her like, I can't believe you said that on the show. I'll kill you. So she flips out and she goes downstairs. And then, and then Bill Aiden is like, I'm really sorry I put you in this awful position by cheating on you. Okay, well then stop now. Don't do it anymore. <laughs> Maybe skip the strip clubs. So then Dolores calls Melissa Gorga and says, are you going to the wedding? And Melissa's like, why would I go to the wedding of someone who wants to hurt my own marriage? I'll never go to this wedding. And she's upset and she walks off camera just upset. And that's really all we see of Melissa Gorga. We don't even get like, you know, the cutesy little story thing. I don't even remember. Actually, I don't think we got one for her. And then... Also, we don't really see Rachel, Fuda, and Danielle after the Irish party or Polly. Um, they're all like done at that point. Um, we find out that Rachel did indeed adopt her son. So I didn't know that. That's nice to know. And then Danielle is building her empire one, two, two at a time was Danielle's little clip thing. Okay, whatever. And she still hasn't made up with her brother. Uh, duh, like that's ever happening. And, and then, then we jump to Teresa's house and uh, Jennifer's gone over to comfort Teresa because she's upset about the whole thing and also kind of get her in the right mood because her wedding is only three days or two days away. 
And Louis Ruelas is uh, there, and this is when he drops the T that he's hired private investigators on every single person in the cast. Yeah. Mm hmm. I don't know. And no one reacted to that, mainly because they were afraid of Louis Ruelas. They were like, we're frightened of this man. So we're just going to say nothing in this scene and walk out and then call everyone we know and go, holy S H I T. Crazy man. Okay. So then um, Jennifer Aiden and Teresa is excited about her wedding day and uh, Dolores is hoping for a ring. But I didn't know Polly was still technically married and he can't marry Dolores. So upsetting. I did not know that. You know who spilled that tea was Margaret. Margaret went on one of the Bravo things and said, um, on the after show or whatever, and said, oh, well, Dolores would love to be married to Paul, but she can't be because he's already married or he's still married. He's still married. So, like, I didn't know that. That's some drama. Hmm. Some people believe that the Polly being married still thing and not totally divorced was the secret that the cast had on Dolores and, uh, you know, to blackmail her and keep her in line. And other people believe that it's that she slept with Joe Gorga when she was young or something. And they're like a six years age difference. So that might be why. I mean, have you heard any other ideas, you guys? My friends believe that it's the first. She didn't want that out. She didn't want anybody to know that. She wanted to keep that private. Yeah, of course she did. Look at her storyline. I mean, would you want, it like ruins her storyline, of course. I think that was probably it. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dolores. It's okay, though. I wouldn't have said it, but Margaret did. Maybe she is the devil. <laughs> no, she's always been nice to me, but... Who knows? By the way, you guys, here are the looks for the reunion. It's supposed to be Royal Irish theme. I don't know. Not doesn't really do that for me. Looks more like prom night, but <laughs> who am I to judge? Here's a picture of Teresa and Louis Ruelas looking nice together. There's the whole family at graduation. Congratulations, Gia, on your graduation. And here's Melissa Gorga's daughter who got into you, Dell. Congratulations, Antonia. Teresa Judice ends the show with this. This is what Melissa's been trying to do for over 10 years. She's wanted to get my brother away from me all the time. She told cameras she got her wish. And of course, Joe Gorga and Melissa Gorga do not attend the wedding. And everybody else goes to the wedding but them. And I think Margaret feels bad that she's at the wedding and Joe Gorga and Melissa aren't, uh, and it just feels terrible, especially since she knows deep down inside that it was the gossip that she told Laura Lee Jensen that's really the reason behind them not coming. What was weird though is we never saw that physical fight. They d absolutely everybody reported there was a physical fight between Joe and Louie, which was why it made so much sense that they don't go to the wedding. But I never saw that physical fight. And honestly, the fight was a big deal. And obviously saying the cheating on a national show is a big deal. But if Joe and Melissa truly didn't believe it was true and it didn't cause any problems in their relationship, then I would just go to the wedding anyway I don't know what happened. Maybe Joe Gorga believed he was disinvited from the wedding after that night and what happened between all of them, that fight, just the verbal fight. You know, Melissa didn't want to go, all of those things. They ended up going up to the shore and having a happy day together there while the wedding was happening. It was heavily covered at the time. Hmm. Fight wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be between them. Let me know if you guys want me to cover the wedding or should we just move on to Real Housewives of Orange County? Because boy, am I going to drag some people on that show. 